make more of less And life as such makes the road tough Don't fret, it just adds to the stress The greatest treasure you ever will measure Is found in the priceless little thing Rich or poor, some poor are rich. True wealth is worth more than gold. Some least have more than those with most. The last shall be first, so we're told. The greatest treasure you ever will measure is found in the prize. It's losing to let you win Peace that surpasses life's pain It's hearing first baby cries Tears of joy that fill my eyes Falling but trying again is found in the priceless little things it's the little things find the little things priceless little things precious Uh, thank you so very much. I'm very, very happy to be here. Uh, that song entitled Little Things is from the operetta Kadar, written by award-winning composer, arts educator, and my mentor, Tony Small, who accompanied me on piano this evening. Give him another round of applause, please. Thank you. Kadar is a Smithsonian Commission operetta about an Omani boy and his journey of self-discovery and an American girl's interaction with the beauty of Islamic culture and customs. And it was paid for by the Sultanate of Oman himself. I had a pleasure, I had the pleasure of premiering a work, of premiering a role in this work. A piece like Kadar that challenges the audience's ideas and feelings is the kind of work that I gravitate towards as a performer. And let me tell you a little bit more about myself. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Probably say hi. Uh, my name is Tyreek Alsevier. I'm 22, sorry, I'm 23 years old. I just turned 23, three days ago. I'm a vocalist, uh, <laughs> I'm a vocalist, a composer, a songwriter, a music producer, and an arts educator based in NYC right now. I was born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland, and that's the greatest city in America. And I don't just say that, the benches say that. Yes, yes, yes. Be more. All right. Um, my mother raised me and my siblings in a way that exposed us to a lot of beautiful and unique things in the city. Um, because of this exposure, we were ambitious kids, uh, making sure that we tried our hand at everything. I've always felt that if something interested me, then at some level, it deserved my engagement. Doing all of the different things that I do honestly comes from a place of simply doing whatever I want to do and seeing what fruit comes of it. At the beginning of each new artistic venture, I ask myself, why not? When music took over my life, which was honestly in about, about in the third grade, 
was when I began to ask that question, why not? I started writing verses for rap songs, and then I moved to saying choruses for those rap songs. And without many singers in my third grade catalog, uh, I sang the choruses myself, but why not? Then I started making full songs. And soon after, I wanted to arrange all the music for those same songs. For my 10th birthday, my grandmother brought me an electric keyboard. I would spend whole days and nights playing and teaching myself as much as I could. By seventh grade, I had several composition notebooks full of songs and raps. I wrote an abbreviated musical that had won a local award and it was performed. I was lead singer, I was a lead singer on the theme song for HBO's The Wire in 2006. Doing all of these things without compartmentalization felt like home to me. A program started at my middle school that still thrives today called Junior Bach. Its aim was to teach young students to communicate their musical ideas all of the way to the performance stage. Coming into Junior Bach with so much material already led me to composition lessons at the Peabody Institute's preparatory. The idea of no rules being a rule in itself followed me all the way to high school at the Baltimore School for the Arts, where I studied classical voice, played piano in the jazz ensemble, took composition lessons at Peabody Conservatory, directed music at a church, and led a gospel ensemble made up of my friends. This kind of freedom and flexibility was normal and right to me. Asking why not didn't give me too much trouble until I began singing classically at the conservatory level. I was often pressured to pick and choose, to abandon many parts of my artistic self that are second nature and essential to my happiness as an artist. I'm happy to say I didn't totally give in, but began to focus even more on giving all of my talents a relatively equal amount of thought and nurturing. Now, out of school with my music degree and performing and writing every single day, my career heavily involves all of those talents, and most of the time, several in the same day. It's normal for me to move from laying down keys for a hip hop project, then moving to ironing out the kinks of a tenor's aria, and it feels like home. I even teach my students in Brooklyn that music, no matter what the genre, everything informs everything. For example, I use hip hop and pop music to teach intro to rhythm, dynamic, and tonality. Now, they can describe what they hear in famous classical pieces with ease. I believe that I am a product of a generation of musicians that aren't totally abandoning all the rules, but are certainly abandoning the ones that just don't make sense for them and what feels right for their artistic self. We're using the world to make our own curriculums. And we are asking arts communities everywhere, institutions and otherwise, to ask more and more, why not? The next song I'll be singing is an original composition and a world premiere, uh, and, and it's called This Close. Thank you to TEDx Men Atlantic and the Knowledge Project for having me here today. Enjoy. This is what happens when you get too close to revolution This is what happens when you get too close to revolution They'll take your body when your mind does not comply They'll steal your body This is what happens when you get too close, too close to revolution. It's not a sign of the times, this constant fight for our lives. And we have always been tired We want liberation yet You take it as a threat That's just what happens When you get too close My God, to revolution That's just what happens When you get too close Yeah, to revolution 
They'll say, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But we've always known the cost of revolution. This is what happens when you get too close, too close to revolution. No, there is no other way. Ran out of choices to make. At the end of the day, to not be fully free is still to be a slave. When a black body falls in the street, and none the guilty is found I know that the mama cry But Lord doesn't make a sound When a black body falls in the street And none the guilty is found I know that the mama cry But Lord doesn't make a sound When a black body falls in the street And none the guilty is found I know that the mama cry but Lord doesn't make a sound I know that the mama cries but Lord doesn't make a sound I hear the mama cry 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 but Lord doesn't make a sound oh God doesn't make a sound good Lord doesn't make a sound when a black body hits the ground Good Lord doesn't make a sound Does it even make a sound Does it even make a sound This is what happens When you get too close To revolution What happened when you get too close to revolution? My people, my people keep running because we're this close, this close, this close to revolution.